What's up everybody, every game has its fair share of problems, with Overwatch being no exception. And while I usually like to focus on the positive or optimistic aspects of the game, every now and again it's necessary to take a more critical look at something, especially when that something happens to be Overwatch's biggest problem, DPS Q times. Come on, come on, come on! I hate waiting! Today I'm going to discuss why exactly this is such a massive issue for Overwatch, how it's impacting the game in ways you may not even realize, and the best possible solutions going forward. This is Master Ian Gamer, and before we get into it, I just want to remind you to subscribe and bludgeon that bell icon, as both really help my channel in these trying times and keep you up to date with all future Overwatch news and content. And now, on to the problem problem of DPS queues. Despite DPS queues only becoming a thing after the introduction of Roll Queue, the problem behind them has actually existed since literally day one. Rewind to any point in Overwatch's history, and you'll find people complaining about the DPS roll. Whether it's getting stuck with 5 insta-locking DPS on your team, or spending more time in queues than actually playing the game, there has always been a persistent problem with the damage roll, even back when it was split between offense and defense. But but why? Well, the answer really isn't that complicated. Simply put, people like shooting things and making those things go dead. At the most basic level, this is why the first-person shooter genre is so popular in the first place. But while many shooter games focus on making that a unanimous element for all their characters, Overwatch is rather different in that it offers alternate roles being the tanks and supports, who can still shoot things dead, but are designed to predominantly do other jobs. While some people enjoy the novelty, of having and filling these alternate roles in a shooter game, at the end of the day, the majority of players are still just playing to shoot things, hence why the DPS role is so much more popular than tank and support. And on its own, there's nothing wrong with that. Given how tried and true the FPS genre is at this point, it's not surprising that more people want to fire a gun than hold up a shield or babysit allies. But the problem arises when it comes to the distribution of heroes who shoot versus hold shields and babysit. I'm not talking in terms of options to pick from on the roster, as that's a slightly different problem I'll be touching on later, but rather slots to fill on the six-man team. Even before the days of roll queue and mandatory 2-2-2, Overwatch was designed and balanced in such a way that your team would typically have the best chance of winning if the number of heroes you had were more or less evenly divided across the three roles. And sure, there have always been odd comps here or there that could work outside of the 2-2-2 format, and Realistically, for the vast majority of players, it comes down more to individual player skill over having whatever composition is deemed meta at the time, but the community as a whole quickly came to accept two tanks, two damage, and two supports as the go-to safe team comp. The issue, though, was that this meant the DPS role, which has always been more popular than tanks and supports combined, now made up only a third of the team's total members, and that's where the real problem began. Now, perhaps Perhaps you're a tank or support player and don't see DPS queue times as being an issue. As a tank main personally, I won't lie that I quite enjoy being able to queue instantly into a match whenever I want, but the negative effects of having painfully long DPS wait times impacts everyone. What happens when Overwatch players are forced to consistently spend more time in queues than playing in matches? Many of them will just deal with it, likely making use of Overwatch's while you wait game modes to pass the time. But many others, sooner or later, will abandon the game. Why wait 10 minutes to shoot things dead in Overwatch when you can shoot things dead immediately in any number of other FPS titles? This becomes an even bigger problem when you factor in the impact it has on major Overwatch streamers and influencers. With these people making their livings off of being able to play the game, they're hurt the worst by having to wait in long match queues as it causes their audiences to get bored, leading to less people watching their streams or videos, and thus in many cases forcing the influencer to switch over to playing different games that'll net them a larger audience. Less streamers and influencers playing Overwatch leads to even less attention for the game, which leads to even fewer people playing it overall. Fewer players overall means less balanced matchmaking, in addition to less revenue for Blizzard, which in turn leads to less money being reinvested into the game, and ultimately, fewer updates, features, and new content for everyone who is still playing it. A healthy game 
game benefits all players, so even if you currently have the luxury of instant queue times, Blizzard neglecting to reasonably satisfy the largest portion of Overwatch's player base will have trickle-down consequences for everyone. Now, it's also important to emphasize that despite DPS players' reluctance to fill the other two roles, I don't believe that it's fair to target and blame them as being the source of the problem. There's nothing wrong with having a preference to play certain types of heroes, especially when that preference is as generic as an entire role. Now, if you refuse to play anything other than Widow or Genji, then okay, there's a problem with that, but given how universally popular it is to shoot things dead, I don't believe blaming DPS players directly is justified. Back before Roll Queue, when the onus was on the individual players to not run 6 DPS, then sure, I think selfish DPS could have been held responsible for your team losing. But now, with Roll Queue, this problem is not inherently their fault anymore. The onus now falls on Blizzard and how they've managed to steer Overwatch into a corner where the vast majority of players are being crammed into only a third of the team slots. At this point, the fault and responsibility for long DPS wait times falls entirely on Overwatch's dev team. I'm not saying that to be mean or insulting towards them, as I do massively respect Jeff and friends for all the great things they've accomplished with the game, but if the design of a game forces players to wait exorbitantly long just to play the role they enjoy, then that's a design problem. In the early days, when the community was first finding that 2-2-2 was the most effective role distribution, Blizzard could have pushed back. They could have found ways to rebalance the game so as to effectively allow more slots for DPS players on a team, but instead they leaned into 222, which ultimately led to the role queue we have today. And while most players, even those who play DPS, agree that match quality has improved with the implementation of role queue, the whole system is tethered to the wicked problem that is DPS queue times. So now that I've covered the problem itself, let's talk about some solutions. The first one that comes to mind is changing up the existing 222 to roll lock to something that offers more slots for DPS players, such as the 132 composition, which Blizzard experimented with not too long ago. Consisting of only one tank along with three DPS and two supports, this format received less than stellar reviews from the community, both when game director Jeff Kaplan initially discussed it on the forums, as well as when we got to try it out for ourselves in the experimental card. I made an entire video analyzing the mode and going in depth with my thoughts on it, which you can check out through the card on screen, but to summarize, the mode was a fun novelty to mess around in, but would be a terrible change for both tank and support players if it became the new norm. That's not to say that a change like this is completely unviable, but making it work in a way that doesn't devastate the two less popular roles would require immense overhauls and balance changes for both tanks and supports, far beyond those which existed in the experiment we got to play. As I said, Blizzard has been balancing towards a 2-2-2 Com for the majority of Overwatch's life, which means that transitioning to anything else at this point would require substantial rebalancing of possibly the entire roster in order to make it work. Even if it could be effectively pulled off without driving away a massive chunk of the Overwatch player base, there's no telling what other new problems it could introduce. This change would be so massive that I can't see it realistically being executed in Overwatch's current form, and this seems to be Jeff Kaplan's view as well. Well. In a recent interview, Jeff addressed the triple damage experiment and reflected on how it's not something he can see happening in 2020. He does, however, allude to the idea of it possibly being a change they'd make with the launch of Overwatch 2, given that a sequel game is the perfect opportunity to enact massive overhauls like this. But even then, I don't see it happening. Given what we know so far about Overwatch 2, it's more akin to a massive expansion update than a new separate game. People who don't buy Overwatch 2 will still get access to the new heroes, maps, and many other features which come with the sequel, so at the end of the day, making a change like 132 with the launch of Overwatch 2 would have a similar impact to just pushing that change right now. So despite the devs seemingly still holding some hope for this to be a solution to DPS queue times, I don't expect it to be the path they end up taking. Another popular solution is along the same lines as 132, but rather than reallocating one of the tank slots to DPS, a new set seventh slot is added to allow for two tanks, three damage, and two supports. While this seems like a massive win for everyone, and would certainly be a fun mode to at the very least experiment with, it's unfortunately even less realistic 
basic than going 1-3-2. While tossing in another player on each team may sound trivial, it actually comes with a boatload of technical hurdles and side effects. On a very fundamental level, Overwatch is only designed to accommodate up to 6v6. Maps are designed to fit 12 players. Heroes are balanced to work in and against teams of 6. The game is coded and optimized at its very core to operate with no more than 12 players in a match at any given time. That's not to say that adding a 7th team member is impossible. Heck, Jeff even acknowledged that it's technically possible, but also that due to the nature of making a change like that, it's basically impossible at this point in time. Saying that it's possible to make Overwatch 7v7 is like saying that it's possible to chop down a tree by punching it with your bare hands. It realistically require a ton of work, and at the end of the day, almost certainly not be worth it. So then, if adjusting the number of DPS slots ranges from possible but impractical to practically impossible, what else could be done to fix the queue times? How about getting DPS players to want to play other roles? Blizzard could find ways of incentivizing the less popular tanks and supports. The free credits and loot boxes are a start, but what if Blizzard made tanks and support heroes actually fun. Okay, that might be a bit hyperbolic. Tanks and supports are obviously fun already, but only to a smaller portion of the player base. Adding new, more uniquely designed and appealing tanks and supports would not only help to balance the hero roster and give more options to the few of us who already play these roles, but also provides incentive for DPS players to at the very least try something other than damage. Maybe they'll always prefer heroes like Tracer or Genji, but if Blizzard added a really cool new support hero who appealed to their preferred playstyle, they might be more interested in queuing support at least some of the time. This is why I have such a big issue with Echo having been released as a DPS instead of a support. In the context of Overwatch's current state, adding a new DPS hero will only worsen queue times, as players will now be further incentivized to play DPS. Whether you're a flex player who wants to try out the new hero, or a Hanzo one-trick who just wants to keep playing Hanzo, Hanzo, everyone queuing into the damage roll will be facing even longer queues. And if this on its own wasn't a cause for concern, it also was confirmed following the release of Echo that she will be the last new hero we get before Overwatch 2. This means that until the sequel releases, which won't be for a very long time still, Blizzard cannot improve queue time balance through adding new heroes. We're stuck with things as they are now for potentially the next year. Now, there are still other ways of solving the problem. For example, Blizzard could always rework existing DPS to fit in the tanker support roles, but I neither like that idea nor expect Blizzard to do it. Reworking heroes is always jarring for those who play them, especially when it results in them filling a different role. So while it could potentially improve queue times, more than anything, it'd probably just piss off the people who already play that hero. Blizzard could also add more cosmetic incentives for playing non-DPS roles, like the loot boxes and credits they already have in place. But this so far seems to have a pretty minor impact on which roles people actually choose, so unless they plan on giving players full-on exclusive skins or something, I can't see further cosmetic incentives being very effective. So all in all, considering the ineffectiveness of all these other solutions, suddenly Blizzard's persistence on pushing 132 starts to make a bit more sense. Despite being unpopular, it may just be the path of least resistance. Most other paths would either end up being wholly ineffective or more trouble than they're worth. Adding new strategically designed tank and support heroes could be a solution, but with no new heroes till the sequel, that's not a path which they can walk at this point in time. 132, as much as we all hate it, might actually be the best solution. And that is why I see DPS queues as being Overwatch's biggest problem in 2020. In the current state of Overwatch, it simply has no simple solutions. Other problems like hero balance or lack of content could be solved, or at the very least improved, through balance patches and content updates, no matter how few or infrequent those may end up being. But the imbalanced ratio of role slots to role popularity cannot be fixed in any straightforward manner. If we're lucky, Blizzard may come up with some kind of band-aid solution to help get more people to play tank and support, or create more modes for DPS players in the arcade, but when it comes to quick play and competitive with the role queue system we have, Blizzard has pushed the game into a corner. 
future. It'll take a lot of work to get it out, and for every moment they wait, Overwatch is hemorrhaging more and more players. Our only hope may be in Overwatch 2, but until the sequel releases, I can't see the game's most popular role getting any better. So, on that bleak note, let me know your thoughts on Overwatch's current queue time problems and possible solutions by dropping a comment down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and share it with a friend if you really liked it. Subscribe, bludge in that bell, follow me on Twitter at MasterENGamer, and join my Discord server to never miss any future Overwatch content. If you'd like to support my channel, then you can hit that join button down below to unlock some cool rewards like the people you see here on screen. Otherwise, this is MasterENGamer signing off, and I'll until next time, have a great day.